The D-Day story is one I've always found irresistible. But as I've learned more, I've realised that much of our accepted view of the Normandy campaign needs questioning. What's more, I think we owe it to those who fought here to get their story right. This is the prototype, the prototype bouncing bomb that was used during the trials here at Chesil Beach. So when did you start to think, we're training now for an invasion? Well, I suppose we were training for it all the time, but you never... You didn't think about that, really. What would emerge from this was a truly astonishing aircraft, the fantasy of every schoolboy in Britain. So this is the old place? Yeah. My God. What you have to remember is that every single one of those troops had to be fed, clothed and equipped. Victory was going to be all about logistics. And I think it's that image of the few and of those huge battles over southern England that encapsulates the Battle of Britain that I grew up with. But it's only one part of the story. From an engineering point of view, it's astonishing what they managed to achieve. This is where Britain's D-Day began 70 years ago. He came into service in 1944. But when people heard those engines for the first time, what they were listening to was the sound of the future. Mortar is just 17 miles long but it endured a concentrated attack so violent it became the most bombed place on Earth. For this tiny piece of rock in the middle of the sea held the key to the entire war in the Mediterranean. The secrecy around this map was absolutely immense. The workmen that assembled it were actually detained here until after the invasion. Common good manners meant we were unable to fire live rounds onto a small Buckinghamshire town. And ready to fire. Can you remember the stairs? All too well. <laughs> the noise, the rate of fire. It should now be possible to deliver a bouncing bomb capable of destroying the German dams using existing aircraft. Berling is one of very, very few pilots that masters deflection shooting. World War II historian and writer James Holland has studied the early years of jet development. As Britain prepared for peace, the country was thrown into a different kind of conflict. But you can only imagine what one of those trainee pilots must have felt like getting in one of these for the first time in the 1950s. They think they've worked out how many were killed on D-Day, and, and the figure is 4,414. How important do you think your mission was and the work of COP to the success of the invasion? It's just a turning point in the war in retrospect, mustn't it? So did you have any nerves this afternoon? I don't know, nerves, what's that? <laughs> you can see how low they are as well. It's just an amazing sight, really. 